Good day, everybody, and welcome to the first uh, TechnaNext webinar. This will be the first of a series of events uh, that will accompany us through Technagilla 2021 that, as I'm sure everyone knows, will be held in Rimini from September 27 to October 1st, 2021. We thought in this strange period to give a tool to all um, ceramic industry professional uh, to have a dialogue between suppliers of the ceramic industry and ceramic companies all over the world in order to keep updated on the last innovation, both in technology and design, and keep a relation within uh, the clients uh, all over the world. Uh, we ran the, the, the Italian version uh, of this webinar a few days ago, and we had all um, we, we, we had 350 participants. Today we have the same number of uh, people registered. So we we think the industry needed such a, such an, an occasion of networking. Um, as you may know, uh, Technanext is a platform that we decided to build up and run in order to give every, every one of you the possibility of exchanging information uh, with, with each other. Um, in the first months, um, the results are quite good. Uh, we have only, we have more than 3,000 people who access the, the platform, 40,000 pages already viewed, and uh, more than 1,000 uh, registered visitors. Um, before entering into live, and so giving the floor to the companies that will uh, um, tell us their vision on what's next in ceramic industry, let me leave the floor to the representative of the two uh, companies that over the last 30 years uh, developed Technagilla, making it the uh, most important show in the ceramic industry. So I'll leave the floor to uh, first uh, to Achimac chairman Paolo Mongardi and then to um, Mr. Corrado Peraboni, uh, CEO of Italian Exhibition Group. I'll uh, leave the floor to Paolo Mongardi. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of ACIMAC, I wish to welcome you to the first TechnaNext webinar that we have chosen to title Ceramics, What's Next? That's why we have deemed useful to inaugurate the TechnaNext platform by chatting on the technological and the aesthetic scenarios that will accompany us in the coming months. After a year spent without physical meetings, we believe that uh, multimedia platforms can be an important bridge toward the return to the normality and face-to-face -face relationship. This is re the reason why we decide to create a platform that follows the social network logic which is user-friendly both for the company of our sector and for the visitors. The number of people registered for this first appointment lead us to believe that we are on the right path and we are grateful to the companies who have supported Technanest and the many customers who are following us in real time. Thanks again to everyone and stay safe. Thanks. Thanks, Paolo. Uh, now the floor to Mr. Corrado Peraboni, CEO of Italian Exhibition Group. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everybody, or maybe good evening to our foreign uh, friends uh, listening our our experience from abroad. Uh, thank you to Achimac, President Mongardi. Uh, Achimac has always been a valuable partner for Italian Exhibition Group in all our years experiencing in Technargilla. 
uh, a few months ago, we had to take a very difficult and painful decision when we decided to postpone the show, the physical show, until September of the next year. And at that time, we started thinking about something that would enable us to take uh, the community tied together until uh, the time we'll be able to, to meet uh, again in person. And uh, in our mind, as uh, President Bongardi said, uh, Texas Anest is a kind of bridge that would enable us to stay together until the, the next year. And uh, uh, this is particularly important for us in uh, a kind of show like Technagilla, where contents are as important as business are usually in our shows. So that's why I wish you a very interesting and fruitful experience in uh, uh, Technanest and uh, see you next September in Rimini. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peraboni. Now it's over to the Director General of ACIMAC, Mr. Mario Maggiani. Thank you, Gianpaolo, and uh, good morning and good afternoon for all the friends connecting from the Far East. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, <clears throat> the President and the CEO have already described uh, <clears throat> which is the situation and the platform. From my personal point of view, just let me underline that ACIMAC, our association, has always been focused on two things, innovation from one side and promotion from the other side. So we always want to increase the promotion of the Italian technology, not only in Italy, but also abroad. And generally speaking, the technology in the ceramic world. And uh, we always look at, at the future. To look at the future, it means to look at uh, innovation. That is the reason why we have created this platform to exchange idea, to learn a new thing, uh, to allow people to, to talk, a customer, a prospect, customer, clients, <clears throat> and so on, obviously. I'm 100% convinced that the real exhibition, the physical exhibition, cannot replace, uh, cannot be replaced uh, with, with platform. Nevertheless, just a few seconds ago, I was saying we have to look at the future. And if you look at the future, we have to think that apart from physical exhibition, we have to think to new instruments like this platform in order to allow people to talk together. Not only in three, four, five days of exhibition, but the, to continue to talk together in weeks and in months. That's the reason why also this platform will remain open until next October uh, when the exhibition will take place. Concerning the number, as already described, we have more than 1,000 companies registered uh, and more than 3,000 visitors remaining as an average at least six minutes uh, on the platform. That is a good result. But again, this is only the early beginning. We are convinced that the situation will improve in the next uh, months. Visitors are coming from the major region, the major country involved in the ceramic world. I'm thinking to China from one side. If we go in the opposite side, I'm thinking to, to Brazil, in Europe, uh, to, to Russia. So to the all major player in these uh, sectors. Uh, I love talking, but uh, I want to leave the floor uh, to, to, to the real important person who will describe uh, their technologies, et cetera, et cetera. So I thank all of you for your attention and stay safe. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. As Mario was saying, let me just summarize you uh, very shortly what, which are the features of Technanext. As the previous speaker remind you is kind of a um, social network for the ceramic industry. This means that uh, every one of you can do the similar things that social networks allows us to do, which is 
sharing photos, videos, uh, documents, uh, but mostly I would say it's one of the only occasion in which you can see exactly which are the people connected and get connected. I mean that exhibitors can see the names and companies of the visitors and search for them and contact them. On the opposite side, visitors can see the companies, the people of the companies and get into one-to-one -one relationship between people and not just entities. Uh, it's a way of making human what uh, virtuality seems not to give. Um, so the invitation is for those of you, I think very few who are not already registered to Technanex to do it in the next hours, but only after listening to our next speakers. Uh, so I'll leave you the floor to Mrs. Paola Giacomini, who is the chief editor of our magazine Ceramic World Review. We, uh, she will introduce you the next speakers. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this first Technonext webinar, which will take us, as said, directly to Technogilla 21 in Rimini in September. Over the coming months, we will uh, analyze in greater depth individual technological issues uh, to keep up to date with the developments of uh, product and process research and innovation. We will talk about uh, new antibacterial surfaces, uh, about uh, glazing decoration techniques, finishing technologies. We will talk about uh, new raw materials for innovative products uh, or body preparation. We will, of course, talk about sustainability and uh, factory digitalization. Um, of course, the calendar of, the, of all the webinar uh, will be available on Technonext, but we will keep you posted uh, through our monthly newsletters and invitations. So what we are going to do today is to provide and offer, thanks to the guests who have accepted our invitation, is to offer an overview of the prospects and opportunities for the ceramic industry that will soon come to the end of a very unprecedented and complex year, as we all know. Um, as far as the global ceramic tile production, Achimaki Research Department, Max, already informed us, and we reported it in our magazine, Ceramic World Review, that the global tile production started to see a contraction as early as 2018 and again in 2019. In the span of just a couple of years, uh, we see that we lost around 7% of global tile production. We are talking about 1 billion square meter in just two years, reaching around 12.7 billion square meter. This means that the strong growth of India and Brazil was not enough to compensate the severe contraction in China. Uh, so, what is happening in 2020? Again, in September, Achimak Research Department, Max, informed that according to the forecast of the major ceramic manufacturing countries, this year we could see a further fall of around 8.5%, which would take us to around 11.6 billion square meters this year. Um, well, 8.5, a fall of 8.5% is a smaller contraction than we all forecasted in May. In the meantime, we saw how China resumed growth and uh, production picked up strongly in other countries, such as, for example, Brazil. What we are going to do today, with the help of our guests, uh, is to uh, see and analyze uh, which drivers could support this recovery and, of course, the future development of the ceramic industry. We will do it with the two largest uh, ceramic technology suppliers, SACMI and System Ceramics, 
as well as we will hear the opinion of a smaller company, FM, which is equally strongly committed in research and innovation, while the webinar will end with a discussion on the role of design in ceramic industry. So our first guest I would like to introduce is the CEO of System Ceramics, Mr. Luca Bazzani. Mr. Bazzani, unfortunately, cannot be with us live this morning, but he will be taking part uh, uh, through an interview we recorded yesterday evening. So let's watch it. Good morning, Mr. Bazzani, and thank you for accepting our invitation. By the way, uh, in July 2020, you were elected the Vice Chairman of ACIMAC, the Italian Association of Ceramic Machinery Manufacturers. Uh, could you tell us something about your, your experience in these first five months? After the election of the official representative members of ACIMAC, election that fully expresses the identity of the association, I'm very pleased to confirm that I have found a very solid and prepared working group. This is due to, uh, to the great job that uh, the outgoing director, B Paolo Gambuli, has carried out in all these years. ACIMAC represents the quintessence of made in Italy uh, in relation to the machines for ceramic production, that is recognized to be a worldwide excellence. I believe that together we, with this working group, we can and we must face the future at the very best, taking advantage from the quality of our machines and the innovation embedded in our DNA. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bazzani. As said, of course, you are CEO of System Ceramics. Uh, uh, System Ceramics, as we all know, is uh, a multinational company present uh, in all the main ceramic manufacturing countries. Before looking at more technological issues, uh, I would like to ask you how you see the current situation in the major ceramic countries worldwide. This is a year characterized by a reduced willingness of investing in instrumental goods. Due mainly to the international situation that does not help to create long-term programs. Yet, there is an increased attention in home as a dwelling place and in home, in home cleaning and uh, hygiene security. We uh, know very well that uh, this is, uh, to this purpose, the ceramic surface is uh, fundamental. We can see a strong resilience of the sector, even in this year. In all those countries that have continued to work and build despite the presence of the virus, especially China on one hand, and, and Europe, South America, and India in, a, in, an, in other hands. I understand. Mr. Bazzani, around one year ago, Achmak organized a conference in Modena here in Italy, uh, talking about the digital future of ceramics. On that occasion, System Ceramics, uh, as well as other suppliers, uh, confirmed how the um, process and factory digitalization could have played the role of major driver of, for the development, uh, for the future development of ceramics. In this regard, um, I would like to ask you whether uh, you have seen a change of approach uh, to digital transformation by your customers, by the ceramic manufacturers worldwide this year. I, ex I, I explain better my, my question. We have seen this in these months how the new technologies helped us uh, uh, over um, overcoming distances, uh, allowing us uh, to continue production activities or maintenance uh, or even start up of new plants. So this is thanks to the new technologies. But uh, do you think that uh, the awareness of the real advantages uh, uh, provided by smart factories is growing uh, this year? Uh, as far as uh, in overall efficiency of the manufacturing activity? Well, um, it's, a, um, it's a very important question, the one that you are proposing. 
Um, what I can say is that uh, the ceramic production is an advanced manufacturing process where the experience and the skills in ceramics have their importance and, and are still making the difference. So system ceramics is working to develop a, cooper a cooperative digitalization, as we call it, of the process that does not reduce the intake of the ceramic producers. But rather, the, these digitalizations leave more time to express uh, this intake by managing each phase of the process that can be automated and can help the conductor of a plant providing him high level information and key data. For example, our latest generation digital printer, the Infinity, which has made an outstanding step forward compared to the previous printing systems, is technologically extremely advanced. Yet, at the same time, it gives back the, to the ceramic operator the possibility to design the ceramic surface through the configuration of the heads, for example, the sequence of the bars, the, connect, the connection of multiple printers on the same line, the synchronization with the structure in order to allow the single customer to have his own original creation. Moreover, Infinity has the possibility to send the graphics to the Qualitron, our quality vision system, to make changeovers in, on selection line in real time. According to the same principles, we are designing the Genesis, that is our technology for the full body decoration of ceramic powders on the super fast press. Thank you, Mr. Bazzani. What further? Research activities have, are you strengthening in this period, in this area, in the area of digitalization? Well, in this period, uh, to this purpose, we have developed Prime, that is an integrated software platform that allows the manufacturer to fully digitalize the whole process. Time is an, a, a, an essential aid to the production, as all, all our customers who have installed are there to testify. Prime four sections, production, quality, maintenance, and energy, store a massive quantity of information that can increase dramatically the results of the plant in terms of productivity and quality. If you add the capacity of command and control of the full plant, you understand why this system is so powerful. We should even have a video, a short video about Prime that we can show our guests assisting the webinar. Very interesting indeed. Mr. Bazzani, let's talk now about materials. Uh, as we know, the technological innovation of process uh, must be accompanied by an equally strong commitment to uh, product innovation uh, as both 
technical and aesthetic. When we talk about product uh, innovation in system ceramics, our mind goes directly to large and very large uh, uh, ceramic tiles and panels and slabs, thanks to the super fast technology. We know that you have developed the super fast technology in this, in this recent months, even 2020. Uh, I would like to ask you the first question to tell us something about the recent developments on the Superfast and also uh, what is the response you are getting with the Superfast technology in the Chinese market, uh, which is one of the most dynamic market this year in this field, in this uh, product segment, uh, in, by installing several new lines of uh, uh, pr to produce the ceramics labs. So what is the result you are obtaining in China as well as in other markets you are operating and to, with what kind of products are your customers focusing more on? We should even have a video about the super fast uh, that uh, we could ask uh, to be played now. Yes, while, while the video is playing, uh, um... I can explain that uh, super, with super fast, we indicate a range of modeless presses that are leading the innovation of the pressing technique. This product eliminates any limits of the previous technologies. In fact, using exactly the same body of uh, used in traditional presses, super fast assures the production of high quantities of material allowing the change of format and thickness in real time and simultaneously. Furthermore, Superfast may reproduce all types of, stru of structures. This makes this process ideal for both new plants and for the renovation of existing installation, where you can install Superfast side by side to a traditional press. This technology is already concretely representing the revolution of the market. If we consider that we are quadrupling the volumes of the presses sold in the global market of presses, which has been affected by three consecutive years of huge decline. This is because Superfast is a very high level technology designed for slabs, but to improved and adapted to the production of medium and large sizes of ceramic ties, giving to the ceramic producers a, 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 a very, very uh, original opportunity that the market have never seen before. If to go back to China, uh, since your question uh, was uh, regarding also the, the Chinese market, uh, I can add that the system ceramics in his history has been, uh, has been very strong in China because system ceramics has a very strong and, and uh, extremely uh, well-managed local branch with a production plan where we're, we were used to produce digital machines. And, and I can uh, really uh, tell you that this year, 2020, we have achieved a terrific result. The biggest Chinese groups have been extremely react reactive towards our innovative technology, uh, both for presses and for the, uh, the brand new uh, digital printers like Infinity. They have chosen our most advanced technology solutions. All top of range Chinese manufacturers have bought system ceramics printers for very new plants. And many of them have rated super fast as the best pressing technology. What makes me proud in particular is that these customers have multiplied their orders after testing our technology, despite the a huge difference in terms of price point. And uh, why this is, uh, why uh, did we, this happen? Uh, as ceramic producers know quite well, what matters in the ceramic production is the low cost of production, the high quality performance, and the possibility to produce a premium material. And all these factors are actually guaranteed by our technology. 
By the way, as far as I know, you were involved in uh, various uh, uh, remote uh, startup of new plants with Superfast in the, in the latest months in China. Is it correct? Yes, we have uh, uh, um, we have given we have invested a lot, given a big importance to to our uh, remote uh, installation in, uh, during uh, all this year uh, for the reasons that we all. Uh, understand that because it's very hard to move uh, uh, our Italian technicians or in general technicians from one country to the other. And uh, uh, um, doing that, uh, we have been able uh, with uh, this uh, remote control of our technicians in place in the plant to install, to, to install and to start up uh, many new presses in China, in China, but also in other countries. So this, is, this, this has been an astonishing result this year that has been achieved through the high technology that System Ceramics has put into this game. This year, um, of course, there were no important trade fairs uh, where the ceramic manufacturers had the opportunity to show their latest products. Uh, of course. Uh, in any case, how attentive do you feel your customers are in the ceramic industry, your customers are uh, to um, the, techno the, the both technical and aesthetics, uh, the statical research on the products this year? Well, this year we have seen that all over the world, uh, where even if the, the times are tough, the attention towards technical innovation is very high. Uh, and this attitude characterizes uh, the strongest uh, and more far-sighted ceramic groups, as well as uh, uh, the smallest or, uh, or far uh, production uh, um, units. Consider that uh, we as System Ceramics have invested over 5% of turnover in uh, research and development even in these difficult times. Our purpose is to develop machines and systems for our customers that can improve their qualitative and quantitative performance. Super fast, infinity, compact and prime, among others, are the new newest technologies from the excellence activity of a company R&D that confirm an undisputed global product leadership that is our, our target also for the next years. Interesting, very interesting. Let's remain talking about design, where, of course, uh, decoration technologies can be a great help, a great support. In this area, uh, what are the most recent developments you are making on your Crea Digit range of ceramic print printers, uh, uh, apart from the, those uh, news you were already anticipating at the beginning of our interview? The latest evolution uh, of Credigit, of a Credigit range called Infinity, um, is uh, uh, completely as a completely different and improved hardware and software platform. Uh, and it has been uh, projected with an enormous design effort. And it has produced a generational change in digital printing. Uh, consider that it is possible to configure the heads of each single bar between uh, uh, different resolution, 360, 400, or even 600 DPIs, uh, or even to have water or solvent paste ink. So all these options allow each customer to configure manually the machine for a, for a fair, perfect customization. There are also endless possibilities to connect the machine to the outside, as well as the possibility to center the graphics with respect to the inclination of the tile, with respect to the structure, with respect to the application of other digital printers, of which with respect to powder deposition machines, providing for uh, uh, between the other things, indications for the choice of materials to our Qualitron that is our automatic quality vision system. The, the, uh, all the electronics and the software 
of this machine, as well as the electronics and the hardware of all system ceramics machineries, is developed and produced in Fiorano in, uh, in our new system electronic uh, hub. This is a great advantage from a technological point of view because we can be always uh, on the edge of innovation, producing and projecting the innovation inside. By the way, we should have a video, a short video describing uh, the functioning of the CreaDigit Infinity machine. Uh, I invite you to, to see it. Finally, Mr. Bazzani, uh, we are over at the end of our, of our um, interview, but there is a, fi a final question, the last question I would like to ask you. We have talked about uh, digitalization, design, uh, um, big sizes and products innovation, but are there other aspects, uh, in your opinion, uh, where the ceramic manufacturers worldwide uh, should pay attention, should focus their attention in the coming months in order to uh, increase their competitivity on the world markets, uh, as well as in order to face better the request of their own markets? Well, um, I just want to answer to your question in this way. I think that uh, for the, our customers, uh, the best uh, or the, the, the most important thing to do is uh, to focus on uh, flexibility. We ourselves are uh, uh, having our vision, two main guidelines for the near future, flexibility and service. In these days when everything changes so quickly, we have created a, produ a production system that is as flexible as possible in order to provide to the ceramic producer the total freedom of action. 
We don't want to limit any future possibility to him. We have a press without mold that allows the customer to change format in real time just by acting on terminals without any mech mechanical devices, leaving the maximum freedom to choose future formats without making further investments. We have a selection line that makes the boxes from a blank sheet. We have a platform software that can manage and control the entire system. From a service point of view, the second point I was mentioning before, we have also significantly strengthened our customer service all over the world. Thanks to the network of our branches, our customer can count on worldwide high skilled operators and technical assistants all year, all, uh, year uh, around, in many places all around the clock even. So we can give this service uh, 24 hours a day. We want to give high level assistance to our customers and we want to have this assistance close to the production plans according to their needs. In the meanwhile, as uh, we have talked before, we have invested in our remote assistance to be able to move virtually system ceramics everywhere. Thank you, Mr. Bazzani. Thank you very much for your time and we wish you all the best for your work. Bye. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Well, we are back live and thank again, Mr. Bazzani for his uh, participation, for joining us at this webinar. Our next guest I would like to introduce now is Mr. Matteo Federici, General Manager of the SACMIS Ties Business Unit. Uh, good morning, Mr. Federici, and thank you for joining us this morning again. Good morning either, or good afternoon as well for some local times. Exactly. We have plenty of participants now assisting from the eastern part of the globe. So for them, it's afternoon or even evening. Uh, well, I take this opportunity to remind that we will have a repeat this afternoon at 3 o'clock p.m. Central European time for, uh, to, in order to allow our Western guests, Western participants to uh, assist at this webinar too. Well, uh, the, first questions are, the first question I would like to ask you too, Mr. Federici, is about your view, your vision of the future of the ceramic industry. In what direction uh, will it evolve, in your opinion? Well, also the current situation is uh, actually not very good, as we all know. Um, in general, for the future, um, in long term, we see uh, a very positive long term. Uh, long-term perspective. Uh, ceramics, uh, you know, is a material that is thousands of years old and um, every time uh, uh, it knows uh, how to renew itself, uh, um, how to find uh, um, new uses uh, thanks thank to its uh, properties, its important properties, characteristic of uh, um, hygienicity and uh, uh, cleanability as well. But it's also a material uh, uh, that allows um, a closed cycle at the end of its life. Uh, and this is very important for the sustainability of the material against other materials. And uh, finally, it's extremely versatile, versatile as no other material is. Um, um, it's, uh, the, the forecast uh, estimates that in 2050, uh, almost 70% of the world population uh, will live in urban spaces. Um, therefore, uh, uh, the, construction, uh, the construction sector, um, which is usually physiological, fl physiologically fluctuating, uh, will certainly uh, grow in future, will register a positive growth. But um, uh, I personally think that ceramics uh, uh, shouldn't only focus on the physiological growth of the sector, it should also focus uh, and uh, try to find uh, and conquer uh, new territories as it, it is doing now in the sector of slabs, uh, where uh, it is replacing uh, other materials, uh, natural materials uh, like marble. 
Um, this also uh, reduces the environmental impact uh, uh, of mining. So once more, uh, the uh, theme of sustainability, which is extremely important to um, adjust uh, to the concept of ceramic. Um, finally, ceramics, uh, um, we see ceramics uh, as intrinsically and potentially um, sustainable, as we said already. Um, we still have, of course, uh, many margins uh, of improvement uh, in our technologies. Uh, we have shown in a recent webinars, uh, for instance, uh, that we have the possibility to halve uh, the uh, carbon dioxide uh, footprint in the next two decades. Uh, of course, this requires uh, uh, energy research uh, on the process. Uh, the replacement of uh, the existing carbon fuels with new green fuels, uh, for example, hydrogen or mix of hydrogen and methane. Uh, but also, uh, we can look for uh, new sources of energies um, able to perform uh, the physical transformation of the material. Asakmi, how do you think you can contribute to this future development? Well, uh, as we said also in the first webinar, uh, we, 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 we see the present, the current situation. We live in a very dynamic world, uh, you know. Um, all macro trends uh, uh, and forecasts uh, made by uh, the specialist uh, uh, they gave us just an horizon, but then the uh, uh, situation uh, changed suddenly and uh, continuously. So um, also for uh, unforeseenable events, uh, uh, no one of us uh, would have expected just one year ago uh, the social transformation uh, uh, of our lives uh, uh, by the COVID impact. Uh, so today uh, the habits are changing. Uh, we are doing smart working uh, and uh, we give great attention uh, to the um, environment of our homes. Uh, so um, even the environment that surrounds us, uh, our houses are no longer only living places uh, or uh, shelters, uh, um, but also spaces to work and spaces for, uh, say, recreational uh, spaces as well. So new meaning uh, for our houses. And this changes, of course, uh, also the use of the materials uh, for uh, um, for the lining uh, of our surfaces. So I, I finally believe uh, that the success of the companies of the future is once more the flexibility, that is the ability on one hand uh, to adapt business models uh, um, to the new uh, needs uh, of the customers and the consumers, uh, but on the other hand, in parallel, uh, uh, to adapt the industrial production models uh, uh, to the new market paradigms. Um, uh, I think uh, um, this place uh, on the table, uh, the need uh, to reconsider the keys of the production processes um, under new emerging perspectives and must find the courage. This is extremely important to find the courage to cut traditional routes and, and run uh, new productive solutions. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, the replacement of traditional alternative pressing uh, uh, with new continuous uh, processing uh, for or forming, uh, such as Continuo Plus, uh, but also the plant dematerialization of, uh, in the body preparation, and uh, as well uh, uh, the new architectures, the new emerging architectures of the uh, management of fired semi finished products, which is raising uh, importance every day more. Um, in any case, I would like uh, just to um, uh, leave uh, the introduction of uh, some of these uh, ideas to my colleague Davide Trombettini, who is the commercial director of our uh, tiles division. So if you can just uh, show the video. Yeah, thank you. Good morning and welcome to this latest SACMI contribution inside Techna Next. Over the coming minutes, step by step, we'll walk you through a ceramic plant to explore the latest development and successes. SACMI, in fact, is a complete plant provider with exhaustive know-how across all departments. That's why the design of each new machine takes into consideration its contribution to the overall ceramic process. So let's start with body preparation, briefly looking at just two aspects out of many. The first concerns our response to your request for simplicity. 
the ability to feed a continuous meal with minimal investment in dosing, with just a single or double feed hopper for all raw materials. The second aspect regards automatic measurement of sleep residual to obtain vital feedback on the milling process in order to achieve greater stability and so improve the quality of the overall process. Moving on from body preparation to the pressing department, SACMI has recently implemented additional features. For example, with traditional vertical presses, our technical department has developed a new solution designed to meet your reliability and productivity requirements. With 13,000 units sold, our pH presses are of course renowned for their performance and development has of course continued. A new set of self-diagnostic process lets manufacturers identify the origin of any failures and perform predictive maintenance, reducing machine downtimes. In terms of productivity, there is also a new model, the PH 5200 Veloce, capable of up to 14 cycles per minute with two 60 by 60 cavities. SACMI Mold and Dyes has also made a vital contribution by developing new smart die sets, the so-called R-square. Here, RFID technology allows self-recognition of mold components and evaluation of residual part lifespan before launching a production run. Remaining in the pressing departments, let's now focus on Continua Plus technology. With about 90 installations worldwide, SACMI Continuous Compaction is nowadays the world's most advanced solution for slabs and medium-large, floor and wall, thin and thick tiles. As with continuous milling and digital printing, Continua Plus is undisputedly one of the revolution that has changed the ceramic process in recent years. The Continua Plus family is also the most sustainable pressing technology due to the lowest electric absorption on the market. The success of Continua Plus can be also explained by its flexibility. Without limitation, you can freely implement your product set, easily switching from one to another. Today, as never before, ceramic tiles have rapidly conquered new fields of application. Kitchen tops, furniture, or outdoor flooring for pavement and gardens. Continua Plus lets you cover all these emerging needs without compromising efficiency and above all, without limitation on raw material or body composition. Glazed tiles, red body wall tiles, super white bodies for stunning marbles, multiple layers, technical tiles, and micronized powder. Continua Plus is a hyper-flexible platform designed to meet your production needs. For instance, the latest PCR 2180 model can produce more than 21,000 square meters a day of 60 by 60. At the same time, Continua Plus can be equipped with additional accessories, making it ideal for superlative, rich full body tiles, also with veins. Last but not least, it can produce structured tiles with impressive definition and shine. 3D effects are achieved not just via the structured belt, but also thanks to a new generation of digital printers, DDG. This is SACMI decisive response to strong demand for 3D decoration, extending far beyond flatness and repeatability. DDG applies glue with a digital bar and synchronized grit in the same area, also with a digital bar, specifically designed for dry materials. This feature allows a sensible reduction of grit recirculation, increasing quality and efficiency. DDG can be also equipped with double bars to manage two different kinds of grits for enhanced aesthetics. Moreover, the DDG can be synchronized with the DHD digital wet printer to make it perfect stone, wood grain, or geometrical effect. Truly a deep digital line. Moving on to drying and firing, we have expanded the multi-layer dryer range. These now have up to seven levels with separated layers or a single chamber. 
many solutions have been improved for thick ties, two, three, even four centimeters. And in terms of energy efficiency, we are able to supply zero fuel dryers that use hot air from the kiln. On the basis of the success of the SACMI FMA plus kiln, we are now developing a new set of burners, especially in the preheating zone to further reduce consumption and increase quality. The next step will be full digitalization of the firing process with a ready database of adjustment to take us straight to lights out manufacturing. We now come to the end of line where SACMI has been investing heavily. For example, after the kiln outlet and before sorting and packing, it's possible to insert several stations such as cutting, squaring, lapping and polishing, matting, antibacterial treatment, and so on. All these processing units require intermediate storage and appropriate flow supervision. In a word, intralogistics. This is where SACMI is uniquely ready. Digital twin and here are essential intralogistic tools. Thank you for your time. I hope this quick walkthrough has generated question and curiosity. We all look forward to meeting up, not only online, but personally. Special thanks to all our customers and all our colleagues who have worked tirelessly during this difficult time. Stay safe and arrivederci. Really interesting. And we thank also Mr. Trombettini for his contribution. Um, Mr. Trombettini showed us your latest uh, process innovation, but you were mentioning also something about innovation in the field of maintenance. Could you tell us something more about it? Yeah, of course. Uh, so flexibility, uh, we have mentioned before flexibility, but this can't be separated from reliability in, in production. Uh, for this reason, it is extremely important to move in the direction to um, of predictive models uh, um, that can support uh, uh, the uh, reliability of the process uh, and uh, the, um, say, the working of the machines. Um, we have mentioned in uh, previous seminars, Italian seminars at Technanext, uh, our digital twin, which is basically um, the tool to simulate uh, the process in order to get the best process design. And also, on the other hand, uh, uh, here, which is a SACMI tool uh, to supervise uh, and uh, manage the whole plant uh, and the whole process. So the first tool is dedicated uh, to the process design and the second one uh, to the management uh, of the process. Uh, but also predictive maintenance and remote assistance uh, and continuous service uh, on plants are extremely important some examples oh, of course so um, we have uh, a short video that can show you we can play it now yeah, yeah. well I can give you just my, my target is just to give you a few hits hints uh, to of the latest uh, service under continuous development uh, new ways of being close to our customers uh, thanks to the digitalization, uh, a new work experience can be set, virtual platform uh, that allows us to keep uh, in touch continuously with customers. It's a sort of dedicated co-working place that both SACMI and customers can, can access for uh, uh, and with several features. First, the first one is the remote support uh, to help customers uh, with all their questions about the machines 24-7 uh, according to the type of machine. Uh, uh, the initial guided assistance can be available online. And then we have teleassistance. Uh, so if machines are connected to the net, intervention can be, of course, more effective. A team dedicated of experts uh, can connect directly, check all data to understand uh, what's not working with all prompt uh, uh, follow-up. And then uh, using standard devices such as iPads or smartphones, uh, we can use uh, uh, an app supporting uh, augmented reality allowing for more immediate communication. For example, it can show hand movements being performed uh, with the image being overlapped to the relative position on the video feed. And then we have uh, uh, 3D models of drawings and diagrams uh, with interactive tools uh, that can make it easier to understand where problems uh, are and solve them promptly. 
tutorials and videos of specialists are available on the platform for both uh, service engineers and customers. And this is not limited only to uh, the concept of uh, machine work, uh, but also to the concept of the process. Technology has always been in the DNA of SACMI, and ceramic technology is one of the key factors of the success uh, of our company together with our clients. Um, then uh, digital technology uh, also uh, allow us uh, to remove physical barriers uh, during actual commissioning, for example, during validation tests. Uh, this can be enhanced by multiple cameras along the line, and this makes it possible to monitor working machines uh, and gain information on final action results. Intelligent tools uh, bring uh, to more complex scenario uh, that introduce predictive, uh, um, introduce predictive maintenance. Uh, this is uh, some of the ways uh, we're using uh, um, cutting edge digitization technology uh, to bring a new opportunity to customers. Of course, uh, uh, behind uh, there is always uh, 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 physical presence. Uh, we are physically present. Uh, all over the world, over 80 companies offering sales and, and assistance services. Um, it's for our company, from our perspective, human touch has always been uh, one of the key factors of the relationship with our customers. And we always think that behind the machines, behind the new artificial intelligence tools, uh, there are always uh, human beings uh, and uh, people uh, with relations uh, and uh, uh, that needs to work together. So this is uh, one of the uh, must that we have always thought uh, in, in our minds. Thank you, Mr. Federici, and really interesting. We, of course, we, will, we look forward to an increasingly digital future, as you described. I thank you again and wish you all the best with your work. Thank you very much. And uh, as always, uh, ceramics uh, above all. <laughs> Next. Well, back, back, we are back here. And we have heard the views and opinions of two leading technology suppliers uh, up to now. But we all know that the technology supplier sector also includes dozens and dozens of smaller companies uh, often operating in specific niches of products uh, uh, with a high or very high level of uh, technological content. Among these, one example that seems to us of particular interest is the one of the Reggio Emilia-based company FM. I see the, chair, the CEO of FM here, Mrs. Barbara Franchini, good morning to you. And good morning thank you for joining us today. As I was saying, your company, FM, is a company specializing in the design and production of thermoplastic uh, products, operating in a variety of industrial sectors, uh, spanning from ceramics, glass, uh, stone, uh, but even food and beverage and pharmaceutical. This is your first digital event. Uh, you chose to launch uh, your newest uh, recent patent, uh, the pull and catch system. The pull and catch system for air extraction and filtration has the characteristic that it has the ability to reduce and eliminate bacteria and viruses, including the COVID-19, which is of extremely importance today for all everyone who needs to grant healthy work, workplaces and the safety of, uh, of employees. The system, by the way, seems to get a very strong response from the market. So our first question, Mrs. Franchini, when and how did you start your research that culminated uh, uh, in the launch of the system? 
Um, let me say that uh, I like uh, to think about this product as the one that will mark uh, the real change of piece of our company, moving away from the target of supplier of simple components, becoming a supplier of more complex system or better, uh, more complex solution. Uh, there is a lot of us in this product, uh, our history, our skill and knowledge of the sector. Pull and catch uh, complete the green blow airline already in our catalog uh, that includes blower like knives and other accessory but till now every accessory is made to blow so we are suited to solve every application blowing the air so cool dry and clean already during the last technology where we present uh, our egg knives and the plus version of green blow we had some visitors that uh, ask us to think uh, to the missing part of the cycle so the suction and since then we started the studying of this part of this missing part that uh, is suction and filtration. So at the beginning of this year, we were already at a good time uh, in the final design phase of uh, uh, pull and catch system, but uh, the COVID emergency arrived. Uh, our project already consider a strong uh, part of air filtration. And uh, so we thought to go further and reach a higher level of filtration that could capture very small particles like uh, uh, viruses and bacteria. Uh, and so uh, started the, our pull and catch production. I don't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, when now yes. <laughs> Uh, when was the system patented? Yes, uh, I confirmed that this product, uh, the full system, uh, but also the single component reach uh, the patent and invention patent at the beginning of the year, about uh, March. And this patent added to more than 100 patents that we already achieved uh, during the years. I understand. Before continuing our discussion, uh, there is a short, a very short video I would like to play, inviting everyone to, to watch it. Mm, then I would like to ask you to go uh, to give us some more details about the system and tell us something about the acknowledgements you received. Let's go. The air quality in some industrial production departments has high values of PM10 and PM2.5. These particles may increase respiratory diseases and the spread of bacteria and viruses, including COVID-19. Nowadays, air is cleaned using centralized systems with various kind of fans, hoods, and filters, which are not very efficient. The goal of the Push, Pull and Catch project is to create a complete system that collects the air used to treat products along industrial production lines and purify it from smaller particles, bacteria and viruses. How does this system work? The hood captures the dust in the air from the air knife along the transport lines. Then the cyclone separates the dust and small debris from the airflow, collecting them inside a tank. The air cleaned from dust passes through HEPA filter, which blocks the smallest residues, including bacteria and viruses. Lastly, the air is released back into the workplace. The pull and catch system by FM offers many advantages regarding safety. And that's not all. It's environment friendly with low energy impact and available with predictive maintenance solutions. Push, pull, and catch system helps purifying the workplace, increasing productivity, and workers' health and safety. Concise and informative. So, could you tell us something more in detail about the system? We should even have a, another very short video that shows the, the system in function while you're answering. Yes. Okay, uh, this video that uh, you are seeing now is a, a test uh, that we uh, made in our laboratory. So uh, the quantity of dust is important, but usually it's not like this. But for the test, it's uh, is better to, to stress the machine. Okay, pulling case system consider to add some more component to the already existing part of the air catalog, so uh, to add something to blower and dark knives. 
such as a suction hood that is composed by a plastic intake manifold and two lateral aluminum profile that allow to create the desired length. This is important because uh, led to apply this system also to very big frame till three meters. So, and uh, a first stage of filtration using a cyclone already equipped with a six liter tanks or connectable to a centralized section system that allow you to separate from the airflow, dust, debris, process residues, so part a little bigger. There is a second stage of filtration that is an optional that through a filter F9 or HEPA H14 can capture much smaller particles such as PM 2.5 and PM 10, also free crystalline silica, up to blocking significant part of viruses and bacteria. After that, the purified air, as you can see, if you saw in the video, can put in the production cycle again. The system uh, is extremely modular and configurable so that it can be applied to any system. It can be a standalone version, so totally autonomous, or you can connect it to the centralized uh, suction system. Can be installed uh, completely with all the component, or you can make also a retrofit on your system. So if you already have our blower and our knives, uh, you have only to add the, the missing part. And you asked me uh, about knowledge uh, I think that the most important one is by our region because uh, we participated at a regional call concerning the solution to combat the spread of COVID-19. And we ranked eight on uh, 54 projects admitted on 300 presented. So <laughs> obviously for a little company like our, we are really proud of this result and and, uh, because confirmed that our project was uh, already on the right way. Because I would like to remember that we started the study of this project before COVID emergency. It's about two years that we are thinking to this project uh, from the last technology lab, as I say. Mm -hmm. But uh, above all, this call for us is very important because uh, the investment necessary to make uh, this uh, product uh, is very, very high. And so for a little company like our, it was impossible to make it in, in a little time. We thought about two, three years. With this help, uh, we are able to realize the product in nine months. And so for us, it's a very high success. <laughs> Great success, really. By the way, the system uh, does not in involve only sustainability or healthy workplace, uh, since uh, pull and catch uh, has a good, can offer, can grant also a good level of uh, energy saving and is already designed for uh, predictive maintenance. Is it correct? Yes, it's correct, of course. We never lose sight on this fundamental aspect, uh, energy saving. In fact, the whole air cycle is generated by high efficiency and low power electric motor. So a complete standalone pull and catch system like the one you saw in the video can reach a maximum consumption of 2.2 kilowatt, like over a, an air dryer. So uh, furthermore, we have to think that today a lot of uh, this function, especially blowing, are performed by compressed the air system that energetically speaking is not so competitive. Another aspect to which we pay um, close attention is the noise emission. All system components are designed to limit the damp and noise emissions, so PPE are not required even close to pool and catch system. Uh, you talk about productive maintenance. Okay, we are used now to think to this matter for big system, very complex machine, but I think that also a simple system like pull and catch can face the matter, absolutely. So we thought about uh, uh, what uh, would be the weak point of the system that could limit its efficiency. So the only part of the system is the filter. And so uh, we focus on this matter and decide to keep the inverter. The inverter is already uh, supplied with the system. And we uh, put into the inverter a part of the software that uh, can send an alert signal when the filter is uh, um, has, have to be cleaned or replaced. So before the system loses efficiency, this is the important. I see. Let's talk about the market, uh, since FM is also present in all major ceramic markets worldwide, from Europe to Asia to Americas. What was the response of the market to pull and catch to date? 
we are very happy with the market response. We expected interest because the matter are important, uh, especially dust and silica, but not so much. <laughs> uh, just a week after it launched, uh, we have received many requests and evaluation to indicate where pull and catch can be applied on an existing plant. So very, very happy for this. Yes, you mentioned it before in your previous answer uh, that the system simplifies complex aspects. Could you explain us more? Uh, yes, till now, uh, there are no other alternative solution that could solve this application of dust uh, in a so easy way. Uh, I would like to point out that this system is very easy to install. Uh, don't need the specialized techniques, both uh, for installation, starting, maintenance, and don't need a dedicated part of the line, but can be totally integrated in the existing line. And it's very small, uh, you need only one meter to put the pull and catch. So it's very, I think this is the easier uh, solution till now. Yes, and which countries have proved the, mo the most receptive up to date and why in your opinion? Uh, but obviously Italy and Spain the first uh, because uh, particularly sensitive to the silica uh, matter because due to a recent legislation uh, from an European directive that uh, is implemented in Italy in June introduced silica among carcinogenic substances. So requiring uh, appropriate health monitoring for workers exposed to silica. Therefore it is uh, really uh, suggested to apply suction hood uh, aspiration system and use of F9 and HEPA filter that is the same filter that we put uh, in our pool and catch system. Uh, so for this reason, Italy and Spain the first. After we have Brazil and Russia because there we have uh, a very active uh, distributor. And so uh, we received a lot of requests from these countries, but also countries like uh, uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Emirates. Uh, I think that uh, matter like uh, worker safety, environment protection and energy saving is also heavily affecting also this country with important impact uh, on industrial policy. So also this country are interested in this kind of product. Uh, well, when are you planning the first uh, deliveries and installation of the system? Really, they, they have already been done <laughs> because we are known to launch product only after uh, field testing. But uh, so there are a lot of um, many customers that are testing it uh, for some weeks. Apart from the test, the first order already shipped and our stock is ready uh, to, to respond to all the requests that are coming in these days. Um, well, um, let's go back to the environmental sustainability. Um, environmental sustainability of production processes is a, is a key issue in since a lot of years by now. Um, but from your perspective as a player in many industrial sector, do you see a consistent approach to this uh, topic, the sustainability, in all the sectors you are operating in? At the, at the beginning, we were tell, we were saying that you uh, supply industries like pharmaceutical uh, or food and beverage, uh, a part of ceramics, of course. Energy saving is uh, certainly an issue that engage all industrial sector on all over the world. And uh, sectors such as ceramic, glass, marble, and stone have almost uh, similar needs for all processes that produce dust and residues. Uh, there are sectors extremely sensitive to air quality and the work environment, such as the one you mentioned in food and beverage, for example, food in particular. So they are very interested in the topic of suction and filtering. Precisely uh, for this sector, there are very strict uh, regulation on contamination and cleaning of the work environment. In fact, already at the end of the summer, we launched a dedicated line for this sector that is named Visual Blue, and this in visual is a blue color, and uh, to immediately identify any accidental contamination in food preparation. So, uh, are mm, measures that uh, involve every sector. Um, to conclude, just the last questions. Uh, do you see possible synergies and integration of pull and catch on uh, uh, production lines what, where it is commonly installed? I think, for example, about uh, finishing lines or at kiln entrance. 
Sure, uh, this system uh, could be applied in many parts of ceramic plants, such as uh, all dry processes, um, like uh, polishing, cutting, squaring, grinding, to limit the uh, crystalline silica, but also dust, but also at entrance and outlet of the kiln uh, to reduce powder and also the waste. Uh, let me make an introduction because uh, it is thanks to the manufacturer that FM has become what it is today. So uh, to the synergies that always push us uh, uh, to study new solution and new product. So we took care of this, of this problem that dust and silica in order to be able to offer them a ready to use solution that can be installed on their main machine. So we are very happy to take care of this secondary but not but in important but not less important system that could for sure increase the value and safety level of their machine. Thank you Mrs. Franchini and really interesting and good luck with pull and catch. Uh, we wish you to of course all the best for with your work. Thank, Thank you. you again. Thank you for the attention and feel free to contact us on our virtual booth in Technanext. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, we have heard by our guest uh, uh, that ceramic factories in the future will be increasingly smart, uh, clean, and based on uh, uh, environmental friendly uh, processes. But we cannot forget that from these ceramic work, from these ceramic factories, uh, uh, innovative materials should be produced and uh, exit. Uh, innovative materials also on, in terms of aesthetics. Then uh, we, we have now a contribution, a recorded contribution to conclude our first webinar, um, opening a window on the design, the topic of design. Uh, I would invite you to watch the next contribution uh, where Mr. Gianpaolo Crasta will discuss with uh, Paolo Lamberti, Vice Chairman of ACIMAC, about the, the new Technonext activities dedicated to design in the ceramic industry. Let's watch it. Eccoci di nuovo con voi, eh, ben, ben tornati, ben trovati più che altro. Eh, come ricordava Paola, andiamo a conclusione del webinar andando a toccare uno dei temi fondamentali della filiera ceramica, dell'industria ceramica e del Made in Italy, che è quello del design. Come è stato detto infatti nel corso di queste ore, eh, L'industria ceramica italiana non è solo tecnologia, ma una componente fondamentale è quella del design. Per questo abbiamo scelto di dare grande spazio al design anche in Tecnanext, non solamente con una disamina di mood boards e ispirazioni delle tendenze future, ma anche con un contributo attivo di un comparto fondamentale della filiera ceramica che è quello degli studi di design. Ne parliamo quindi con Paolo Lamberti che è vicepresidente di ACIMAC ma eh, titolare di uno studio di design e rappresentante del, del, di questo comparto all'interno del, dell'associazione con cui cercheremo di appunto affr affrontare questo tema. Partiamo ovviamente dalla, dalla situazione attuale e, e in qualche modo mi piacerebbe chiedere a Paolo quanto e come ad esempio l'assenza di appuntamenti fieristici fisici ha influito sulla creatività e quindi conseguentemente con le proposte eh, delle aziende ceramiche e quindi degli studi di design che eh, in qualche modo sono direttamente legati alla creatività anche dei loro clienti. Buonasera a tutti, eh, cerco di dare una risposta insomma, abbastanza completa su questo tema importante in quanto quest'anno, quest'anno 2020, come tutti sapete, si è caratterizzato dalla mancanza di fiere. Noi siamo un comparto di studi di design che eh, si occupa prevalentemente delle nuove collezioni, oltre a fare un lavoro quotidiano con le aziende, ma le collezioni nuove, le fiere, sono un momento per noi in cui si presentano, come succede anche nella moda, le nuove collezioni per cui si fanno i progetti, si lavora duramente per, me, per essere pronti a questi, a questi momenti, assieme chiaramente ai tecnici che lavorano all'interno delle aziende, che sono un altro elemento importante per dare continuità al nostro lavoro. E diciamo che negli ultimi anni, ma parliamo degli ultimi vent'anni, le innovazioni a livello di design sono arrivate sempre dalle fiere, per cui le fiere sono state un momento, diciamo, eh, 
dove si sono esasperate le, diciamo, le grafiche, le, le superfici e questo ha permesso ai nostri clienti di trovare soluzioni che poi si sono trasformate anche adattandosi a forme più semplici per il mercato e hanno creato dei must che sono diventati poi must a livello mondiale. E la scienza delle fiere ha cambiato chiaramente profondamente questo, questa parte e quello che si può dire ora è che i prodotti che vengono oggi fatti commissionati agli studi da parte delle aziende sono prodotti che hanno più un carattere commerciale, non sono più innovazioni vere e proprie dal punto di vista del design, ma sono rivisitazioni di temi commerciali già presenti, probabilmente anche eh, che arrivano da, dalle indicazioni dei loro stessi clienti. Per cui si lavora su una parte di, di, di design molto più basico, chiamiamolo così, e eh, ci cerca di dare al mercato delle risposte che sono diciamo piuttosto piatte rispetto a quello che è, è normalmente il lavoro che viene fatto da noi. E, naturalmente questo ha eh, fermato un po' quello che naturalmente in Italia è sempre stato, cioè questo insieme di eh, ricerca che comprende colorifici, comprende diciamo, gli studi grafici, comprende la parte meccanica quindi delle macchine e si è, quindi, si è quindi assistito a un ridimensionamento di questa, di questa parte. E questo momento ha anche, secondo me, evidenziato appunto il fatto di come lo studio ha un'impronta forte da questo punto di vista, impattante dal punto di vista diciamo, dell'importanza dell che ha rispetto a, al, al, ai nostri clienti e al mercato in generale. Cioè, per quelle che sono le competenze interne di ogni studio, le risposte sui progetti nuovi arrivano prevalentemente eh, da questo insomma dal fatto di doversi eh, confrontare con chi fa della ricerca una propria mestiere e una sua vera innovazione eh, c'è stato in, queste, in, in qualche modo quanto eh, la tecnologia in questi mesi ha modificato il vostro vivere diciamo quotidiano certo. quindi anche il pensare probabilmente sì, diciamo che noi come tutte le aziende insomma, che, che hanno vissuto questo momento, quest'anno in particolare, abbiamo, ci siamo adattati attraverso un, diciamo, mostrando i nostri progetti ai nostri clienti attraverso dei sistemi digitali che sono i webinar e sono comunque modi per poter arrivare. E certamente è, è molto diverso da quello che facevamo prima, noi abbiamo sempre esposto il nostro prodotto, il prodotto del design è un prodotto che si tocca, che si sente, anche tattile e quindi è molto difficile comunicarlo eh, attraverso diciamo, il web. Certo succede un fenomeno che poi tutti si adattano alle cose e quindi ci si trova che anche le cose che prima magari erano più, più strane si, si le apprezzi e le motivi. Quello che però credo sia importante mh, Sottolineare è che questo momento ci ha permesso anche di andare a, a fare un'analisi su quello che abbiamo sempre fatto, andare a ottimizzare i, pro, i processi e a trovare anche, per chi ha saputo insomma, interpretarlo, dei momenti che possono essere utili soprattutto nel, nel periodo che speriamo di, di prepararci ad affrontare presto, cioè un periodo eh, positivo. Ottimo. E... Diciamo che riprendo quello che dicevi, cioè sì. diciamo per eh, l'uomo comune, seppur nel settore ceramico, passatemi sto termine, eh, lo studio di design si può esemplificare nei progetti appunto che tutti vediamo in fiera, più o meno velati, più, più o meno mostrati, però eh, in qualche modo ban banalizzo con un foglio di carta, in qualche modo eh, voi presentate il vostro lavoro. Mentre dietro quel foglio di carta c'è un mondo che peraltro è uno dei mondi che ha subito l'evoluzione maggiore sì, negli ultimi anni. Assolutamente, noi siamo abituati a cambiare e lo abbiamo fatto tantissimo negli ultimi 40 anni, si può dire, per fare un brevissimo riepilogo partendo dagli, dai rettini serigrafici, quindi i laboratori serigrafici di diciamo del passato erano eh, i punti i laboratori dove si trovavano i prodotti ma soprattutto anche, eh, anche la, diciamo, tecnicamente il rettino per poter produrre il, 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 la ceramica. Questo ha dato un grandissimo impulso e ha fatto partire di fatto anche un insieme di logiche che hanno messo insieme sia la parte del design che la parte meccanica. Poi c'è stato il periodo diciamo, nel 94 il rotocolor è entrato e ha fatto da padrone, ha dato un nuovo standard al, 
alla, alla serigrafia, alla decorazione e anche facendo entrare il design più in una forma completa, mentre con i rettini il design era un accessorio che non era nemmeno, non era nemmeno fatto pagare, insomma non era nemmeno quantificato dal punto di vista costi. Il rotocollo ha cambiato le cose, ha permesso di dare una connotazione diversa anche al, al, al design perché si potevano fare più facce, quindi l'abbinamento fra eh, diciamo, i disegni era diventato molto molto importante. E poi il 2001 ha visto diciamo, la presentazione di questa macchina digitale, la prima in Spagna, Cevisama, eh, la che era già ha presentato appunto una macchina digitale che ha di fatto aperto un nuovo capitolo, dove lo studio di design diventa un... Eh, un, diciamo, un creatore di superfici, ma questo ha cambiato anche tutto il comparto eh, ceramico, dando meno importanza ai tecnici che lavoravano sulle macchine meccaniche tipo i rulli o, o i rettini che devono essere molto capaci anche manualmente di cambiare le cose, introducendo delle figure nuove all'interno delle ceramiche che sono appunto ragazzi più giovani, esperti di informatica, eccetera, che hanno col tempo saputo creare anche all'interno delle fabbriche degli standard molto più molto più, come dire, consolidati, ai quali noi ci eh, rivolgiamo. Cioè, basta pensare che noi abbiamo sempre fatto nel passato fisicamente delle piastrelle per poterle farle vedere ai nostri clienti, oggi da noi non c'è più nemmeno una piastrella, perché quello che eh, dobbiamo dare come messaggio è un messaggio di creatività totale. Gli studi sono, tutti gli studi, diciamo, che possiamo dire che sono aggregati ad ACI, ma quelli che sono gli studi più importanti, sono dotati di tecnologia, di competenze e di modi di lavorare che hanno saputo negli anni dare risposte importantissime a esigenze di ceramiche, creando delle superfici sempre più grandi, con caratteristiche innovative. Insomma, un, diciamo un processo che si sta ancora sviluppando, che ha dato e dà ancora tantissimo valore aggiunto a tutti i nostri clienti. È chiaro che, scusa, finisco una cosa vai, vai. importante che, che non ho detto, che è, diciamo che come spesso succede anche nelle arti grafiche in generale, il valore è sempre un po', come dire, messo da parte, no? Come diceva Gine. quello, mio cugino me lo faceva gratis o qualcosa del genere. Eh, quello che eh, voglio dire è che i valori eh, sono frutto di investimenti importanti, di personale che si è formato nel tempo di ehm, ricerche che vengono fatte sui materiali, che vengono fatte preventivamente per poi essere eh, mostrate ai clienti. Quindi investiamo per poi fare dopo eventualmente forse una vendita. Quindi questo è molto, è molto importante dirlo. È anche importante dire che eh, per mantenere una, una um, esclusiva sui disegni, per poter dare un valore al cliente, eh, i prezzi sono, sono, sono prezzi che sono di, quelli, insomma, necessari per poter fare questi mestieri, mentre a volte eh, succede che ci sono insomma, situazioni, studi o persone che eh, non perseguono proprio una linea così chiara e questo gli permette di poter avere anche prezzi più bassi che naturalmente vanno a creare nel mercato un, un disturbo, ma anche al di là del prezzo, anche per il fatto che sembra che il nostro valore sia, sia poco, invece in realtà è un valore enorme dato da competenze, investimenti e grande, e grande dedizione soprattutto perché è un mestiere veramente di passione. Sì, diciamo che eh, per, per provare eh, in qualche modo a riassumere quanto ci siamo detti, eh, volendo usare tre parole, gli studi di design sarebbero anzitutto valore, eh, creatività e servizio direi, perché esprimete in chiaro, siete l'emblema di un'azienda di servizi industriali, certo. cioè è tutto eh, come dire, intelletto e vicinanza alla clientela. Proprio per, per raccontare, per cercare di raccontare queste, queste, queste vostre realtà, in Italia e all'estero avete scelto, direi, di utilizzare Tecnanext come megafono e in qualche modo avete, state programmando tutti insieme delle iniziative che lanceremo su Tecnanext nei prossimi mesi. Ce le presenti, così facciamo un lancio prima di chiudere su quanto accadrà in piattaforma sul tema del design. Certo, allora innanzitutto... Mh... Diciamo chi sono gli studi che fanno esatto. parte del, di, di, del comparto studi grafici, studi di design che fa parte di ACIMAC, e eh, sono Tecnografica che rappresento, eh, Steelgraph, Inside, Dosilab, eh, 
Ecodesign si è aggiunta esatto. da poco, per cui è un'azienda che, che, insomma, che sarà qui con noi e, per, e, e inoltre il Digital Design, un'altra importante azienda del nostro territorio che diciamo assieme a tutte le altre abbiamo appunto, siamo riusciti a, a, a dare una forma a questo, a questo insieme di, di aziende e con l'obiettivo di cercare di portare su questo, su questo contenitore di contenuti delle forme un po' diverse, cioè parlare di design e quindi cercare di dare anche una, a valorizzare quello che facciamo al di là dei rapporti con i clienti. Noi avremo a breve del, dei professionisti del design provenienti da vari paesi che faranno con noi delle discussioni su quelli che sono i temi del design che saranno ad uso anche dei nostri clienti perché cerchiamo di eh, immaginarci una piattaforma che possa essere al di là del nostro lavoro che facciamo solitamente ma che possa dare anche informazioni sul design generale, possa avere un punto di vista del progettista, per cui saranno architetti, designer importanti, che daranno una, una loro interpretazione di come si sta evolvendo il eh, design per le superfici e, quelle, e quali potrebbero essere domani le esigenze. Anche pensando al fatto che noi facciamo un lavoro di tipo, come dire, di servizio, ma in realtà eh, potremmo fare insieme ai nostri clienti ancora meglio, sapendo, avendo più informazioni e scambiandoci delle, diciamo, delle competenze che poi si trovano sui prodotti. Molto bene, ringraziamo Paolo, quindi su, prossimamente, come si dice in questi casi, su, su Tecna Next, non solo il Next della tecnologia, What's Next della tecnologia, ma anche il What's Next del design. Ringraziamo qui tutti per aver partecipato e aver pazientemente atteso queste, queste due ore in diretta, ringraziamo i relatori precedenti e, e auguriamo buona serata e vi diamo appuntamento al prossimo webinar. Grazie a tutti. Grazie a tutti. We are back online, this is the last minute of the webinar, so... Once again, thanks to all the attendees and we'll see each other in the Technext platform and at the next webinar starting from January 2021. Thanks everybody, good afternoon.